This quick video will walk you through the essential process of thinking through your topic before starting your paper. This will save you time in the long run because it will set you up for success when searching for your resources, as well as preparing you to get the most out of consulting with a librarian. Not all students understand why it's important to go see a librarian early on in the writing process. We love librarians because they're research wizards and they often coordinate with your professors so they have the inside scoop on your assignment. This all equates to saving you valuable time in the long run. A common misconception that many students have is that the first step in research is heading to the library and trying to find books or articles or searching for resources on Google. But in actuality, your first step in approaching a research paper should be thinking critically about your topic and the best way to approach it. By carefully planning your paper in advance, you will save yourself time and grief in the long run. We think it's super valuable to see a librarian early on in your research process because they're good at what they do. They're essentially professional research finders. More often than not, all the sources you require will not be neatly packaged in one place. You'll have to use a variety of media and they will likely be scattered. Librarians are aware of this and they can help troubleshoot. Also, some of what you're wanting may not even be published. Librarians will know if the information exists or not, and they can save you countless hours trying to find non-existent resources. Also, databases don't think like us and often require specific phrasing when searching. Reference librarians are experts at this, so ask for help from them. This video will help you collect all the info you need before going to speak to a reference librarian. There are five easy but important steps that we'll walk you through in this video to get you on your way to research excellence, but we'll introduce them first here. First off, you need to make sure you truly understand the requirements of your assignment. Secondly, you need to be able to develop your topic if you weren't given one by your professor. Then, most importantly, is focusing your topic. This includes outlining the scope of your paper. After that, identifying appropriate keywords that will yield the most useful search results from the UBC Library database. And last but not least, talking to a librarian generally before you even start writing your paper. It's much easier to get pointed in the right direction before you've already done a ton of work and then have to backtrack. Some students jump into research before they fully understand what the instructor is looking for with the assignment. The most important thing about this step is being 100% sure on what your instructor is asking of you. If you don't know how to answer the next few questions being posed, check your syllabus or ask your professor to clarify. Some important things to know when going to see a librarian is what class the paper is for and who the instructor is. Librarians often work in close contact with profs, so they might even be familiar with your assignment. Knowing the specific word or page count is also helpful, as it may help guide how many resources and what type of resources you're choosing. The last thing to think about in terms of assignment requirements is the kind of sources your instructor requires. Do you need books, articles, primary sources, data, current material, peer-reviewed, or scholarly sources? For example, meet Sarah. She's a first-year student taking a history course. She has to write her research paper, and it needs to be four pages, and she must consult at least three peer-reviewed sources, one of which needs to be a primary source, such as a newspaper or a letter. Step two will vary a bit depending on your course. For some classes, you'll be given a topic, but for others, you'll have to develop your own topic first. Developing one can be tricky, but we have some suggestions. Try reading through your course syllabus and try to identify important themes that you could explore further. You can also review your notes to see if you flagged something during the year that was of particular interest to you. After you have your topic, you should describe it out loud as if you were explaining it to your friend. Imagine that you're having a conversation with your grandma, who knows nothing about the topic. Without using the phrasing from your assignment sheet, explain what you're researching in your own words. By using your own words, it will ensure that you truly understand what the topic is about, which is a pretty essential piece. Sarah's prof has given the class a topic. He wants them to research the Battle of Britain and how Germany used air warfare to try to capture the United Kingdom. Sarah found the unit on Germany's tactics particularly interesting, so she will look at why their tactics failed and how it affected the war effort for both the Axis and Allied powers. Step three can be the trickiest step, but we'll walk you through it so you're clear on what to do. The reason focusing your topic is important is because that way we can ensure that the scope is not too broad or too narrow. If it's too broad, you may get too many search results. But if it's too narrow, you likely won't be able to find enough. It's important to do some preliminary research to help pick your parameters and focus your topic. Setting parameters for your research is difficult if you know nothing about the general idea or controversies of a discipline. To help set parameters, it's good to get a broad overview of the topic. You can do this by reading an encyclopedia article 
or reading the abstracts from a handful of articles on your topic. Here's a visual example of some parameters that you might use to focus your topic. Ask yourself, does my research need to be contained within a certain geographical area, like Canada for example? Or should I only use sources published after 2000? Or what about the population you're examining, for example, only student athletes? Sarah has to focus her topic and set some parameters. She has decided to focus on Germany's perspective in the battle, as well as only examining the effects up to autumn of 1940 when the battle ended. Since her paper is relatively short and she doesn't have much space to get too in-depth, she's decided to narrow her scope and only focus on how the loss of the battle affected the Axis powers. The second to last step is identifying the keywords that you're going to use to search for your resources. Since library databases don't work like Google and they don't return related search results, you have to be very conscientious of the words you choose to search. Single words or short phrases are the best things to use when searching. Long sentences aren't a great idea because the database will search for exactly what you type. To help prevent a lack of search results, our tip is to brainstorm your topic and write down the five most relevant words. Once you have those, try to come up with a common synonym that is used in your field of study for each word. Sarah looked through her notes and course syllabus and found that these words came up often. They seem to be the best choice of keywords to search. Sarah also knows that she shouldn't type all the words in one sentence because the database won't be able to find any results that way. The last step in this process should be the easiest part, going and talking to the library research experts. Reference librarians are wizards at finding information, which means they can get you started in the right direction. To make connecting with a librarian easier, we've provided a place for you to answer the four steps at the bottom of this page, and then you can email them to yourself. There are many ways to connect with a librarian. You can visit a reference desk at one of the branches, or you can use AskAway to live chat with a librarian. If you're visiting a librarian in person, make sure you choose the correct subject library, as the nine libraries on campus all have different subject specialties. Check out ours.library.ubc.ca to determine which library to visit. Sarah connected with her specific Information Ninja, or a reference librarian, and was able to get pointed in the right direction for finding sources. We hope you found this video useful, and please feel free to leave a comment below or check out some of our other student toolkits.